Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Vibha, and we are from North Highland, uh, a mid-sized management consulting firm based out of Atlanta. Uh, we are very happy to be here at ATAG and present some uh, one of the great work that we have done around demand prediction for a retail client, uh, especially during a weather emergency. So I would like to introduce two of our presenters. First, Charlie Moore. Uh, Charlie has about 11 years of experience in the DNA space, and most of that time he spent in energy and utilities industries. Uh, his expertise includes uh, machine learning, uh, advanced analytics, data visualization, and both uh, traditional and data big data engineering. Our second presenter is Divya. Uh, Divya is a senior data analyst from North Highland, uh, and she has 10 years of experience in the data warehouse and BI domain, and she is a Tableau expert in-house. Uh, she does have some background with Cognos, Crystal Reports, and additional traditional data and modern data platforms. So I would like to hand it over to Charlie to kick off the presentation. Thanks, Viva. And is everybody seeing my screen all right? Are you able to see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. So thank you for the introduction, Viba. Um, I want to walk through a um, as, as Charlie, real quick, actually, I think you're you're sharing and you've got two screens. We're actually seeing your um, your second screen that has uh, your presenter view. Okay, so let me uh, swap over to the other uh, monitor that you've got. Would probably be best. We go. Is that better? That is a winner, my friend. There you go. All right. Um, so, as Viva mentioned, we are um, presenting on some work that we did a little bit ago for a client of ours, um, a large home improvement retailer. Um, when a when a natural disaster occurs, um, they have to spin up an emergency response group. Um, and really, what we're trying to to help them understand is where is demand going to occur. And what does that demand actually look like so that they can get the right product to the right places at the right time? From a very practical perspective, um, weather emergencies are incredibly expensive. Um, in 2016, we saw $153 billion worth of damage worldwide due to natural disasters. Um, and the impact that occurs is uh, not just on the stores, but obviously on people, you know, people trying to live their lives. As a disaster is coming towards you, you may say, boy, do I have a lantern and do I have batteries that I need for it? Um, after it happens, you may need a dehumidifier or you may need new carpeting, shingles, um, lumber, all sorts of different things. The challenge comes in demand spiking very quickly in response to that natural disaster and a potential risk of store shelves being empty. So how do you avoid that problem? Um, the, the opportunity on the left is if we can respond quickly, if we can identify a demand before it actually gets there, we might be able to get product to where it needs to be. And this can drive three key things. One, increased revenue from the sales. Two, increased loyalty because you have the product that people need. And three, it's, it's just a good community service to be able to improve the lives of people who are impacted by these major natural events. In this specific case, we're gonna be talking through a hurricane example, but it could easily be applied to a lot of different settings, tornadoes um, or even non-natural disasters. Um, and we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So the challenge that we see here is the real world constraints. Inventory that you have available to ship to a store may be limited, or it may be targeted for other things. You may not be able to send all of the ladders in your distribution center because you know you need some of them for another problem. There may be huge logistics costs, um, especially as a storm is bearing down in terms of overtime in the distribution center, the truck drivers that have to get the product to the store. So making sure that you get the right product to the right place minimizes those logistics costs. There's a small window of opportunity when you can act. 
a hurricane moves in quickly and causes a lot of devastation in a very small window of time. How do you get the product there either before the storm happens or immediately afterwards so that people can come to the store and get what they need? And then how do you know what's going to be needed? Um, it, two examples from 2017 when we first kicked off this project were um, Hurricane Harvey, which dumped you know, 30 plus inches of rain a day over Houston versus Hurricane Irma, which was a very fast moving high wind storm. The impacts that they had on the, the areas where they hit were very different and the product needs that they had were very different between the two uh, areas. And lastly, how do you figure out how much product to send to a place? How much demand is going to be created so that you don't end up with extra product in one place where it could have been used in another? The opportunity is real. Um, we've seen retailers that had you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of hurricane related sales in, um, in past years. And the, the challenge is if you're sending 10,000, 11,000 trucks worth of product, how do you do that efficiently? Um, we've also seen retailers, even though they're selling a huge amount of product, actually taking net losses on those sales because the transportation costs are so high. Let's talk about the specific issue here. Um, in a natural disaster, the demand typically spikes incredibly quickly. Your baseline of around 0% or around 100% of, of normal is what you tend to expect. And then very quickly, the demand will peak up um, right after the event. There's a brief window beforehand where you may see what's called pre-strike sales. People may go out and buy a generator in advance of a storm. But by and large, most people are going to not buy something major until they need it. Um, so after the storm has already hit. With a traditional replenishment system, which is what we're seeing on this red line here, and apologies that these graphs are not made in Tableau, but um, that was just for the presentation. Um, the traditional replenishment system lags the actual demand that we see. And this results in two issues with our stock on hand. So this yellow line shows the available stock on hand in terms of days remaining. The first thing is that lag results in um, a complete stock out. You run out of material that you need and you are unable to meet customers' needs um, when they come to your store and try to buy things. That's frustrating for them. They have to go to another store. Um, and then the second issue that we have is that the the lag results in you ending up with a significant amount of on-hand stock that you wouldn't normally have in your store after the demand has already decreased. So people have already figured out, I don't need a generator, my power's come back on, uh, and now you've got 50 days worth of on-hand stock of generators that may actually be much longer than that. So in order to predict this, we built a, um, a machine learning model in Google Cloud Platform. Um, and I'm not gonna go into details of that because we really want to show the Tableau side of this. But um, just for a little bit of overview, we brought in a whole bunch of features. So anything from uh, biographic information. So what does the tree cover look like in the area? Um, demographic information. How many people live in an area? Um, how affluent is the area? That will all impact what types of demand you see from these stores. Then pair that up with 10 years of historical sales information and feed it into TensorFlow and Keras models that get trained and output into a big wide data set that we can look at using Tableau. None of this matters if it doesn't work, right? Um, and the key here is that our predictions ended up being highly accurate in the categories that we were looking at. Um, we captured 88% of the actual demand within $150 of category sales. Um, so what that means from a practical perspective is that on average over the course of a day, or would only be off by plus or minus $150 in product that we recommended we ship to them versus what they actually saw in demand in stores. This then has to get integrated into a process. So this first step, this gross sales prediction is the, the only thing talked about here. But how do you go from predicting a sale to understanding which SKUs to select, to looking at what's already in the store so we don't ship things 
that they don't need. Um, maybe there are already in-flight purchase orders, so they may already have a pallet of generators away. The distribution center may not have inventory, so if it doesn't have inventory, we have to look other places. Um, and then we have to fill out a truck. So we, we round the predictions to a number of pallets that we're gonna ship. And then that is our new net SKU sales predictions that we're going to actually be visualizing. All of this can happen in an automated fashion. We integrate with the business and we have a human in the loop perspective. So the, the merchants and the field teams have to look at the recommendations that we produce. And the only way that they can do that is by looking at the data. That's where Tableau comes into play. They can take a look at the, the predicted information. So we think a storm is gonna have this big of an impact. Do you think that these predictions make sense? If so, they can modify or cut the purchase orders that then leads to packing and shipping the trucks and actually sending them out. So we're gonna show two dashboards today um, that, we were cre that we created during the course of this presentation. Um, the first is the demand prediction so looking at the storm and what we expect to see in terms of damage, um, this lets people then click through to their stores and see what do I, what do they think I'm gonna need? And do I need to modify the purchase orders? There's then that kind of in the middle step where they do the cutting of the purchase orders, the ship, shipments get packed onto trucks, the trucks start rolling. Um, and the next step after that is to track the in-flight activity. So, I'm at a store, I'm, I have people coming and ask, are you going to have more ladders or generators? Before this project, it was very difficult for them to get insight into those shipments. This gave them ability to look at what's actually in flight um, and see what's coming. So with that context, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Divya um, for the next part of the presentation, the actual practical demo. Can you give me the bar, Charlie? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll share the screen now. Let me know if you can see the screen. Coming through great. Okay, cool. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for giving a brief intro to the dashboard. So using we have this dashboard to get the sense of how do you look at the weather data and understand what's happening on the ground at each store. How do you show your weather data? We don't see the dashboard. Can you reshare it again? Okay. Can you see it now? Now we can see it. Okay. Yes. Cool. Thank you. So, so using the data set, we have built this dashboard to get the sense of how do you look at weather data and understand what's happening at the ground at each store? How do you turn your weather data into predictions? How should you consume as a user? How do you convert uh, these to orders and how do you track it? So most of these numbers are made up and they don't tie up uh, for client confidentiality purpose, but this dashboard is for uh, event Hurricane Irma. So on the dashboard here, uh, map, uh, weather, weather, is, weather data is aggregated at store level and stores listed on the map. And we have a list of uh, weather metrics like current precipitation, cumulative precipitation, wind gust, temperature, humidity, uh, soil moisture, and other metrics. So using all these weather metrics, we can uh, understand what's happening on the ground at each store. So we have a day and time uh, filter. So we can either pick a day or uh, just, uh, I can play, play here and see uh, what's happening, uh, what's happening on the ground. Uh, so here uh, we can see that zero is uh, like I picked cloud cover percent and zero green being zero percent and red being hundred percent and we can see how it's moving up the coast. So with this, we need to consider potential demand spike because of these events. Uh, so if I'm a region manager or a store manager, and if I want to filter out. Uh, and understand what are the predictions at my store or my region, we can use this filter region and store and filter out to a particular uh, store or region. Uh, and on the right here, we have highlighted some important information like stores affected, orders needed, pallets needed, uh, and this is all uh, aggregated for all the stores. 
But if I want to know uh, for a particular store uh, and the products that are affected for that store, for example, I'll pick a store, uh, store nine, and, and you can see that all the sheets on the right are uh, to that store, and see that uh, baseline uh, sales we expected at an event is 70k. And uh, with this prediction demand, uh, we think we can expect there would be a 368k uh, worth of sales. And on hand inventory, we have 72k worth. And on route, uh, we have 9k. So therefore, uh, we need to order 253k worth of products. This is cumulative of all the products uh, for all the classes and all the items. But if uh, if a manager they want to know what are the items uh, they need to order, they can use this sheet uh, where they have all the products uh, uh, listed out, and we have a list of metrics. I can pick any any metric and uh, see that for all the metrics we have information, and when we hover hover over that uh, bar, we can see the detailed information like what what are the pallets needed and what's the pallet pallet each quantity. Uh, retail uh, dollars needed. What are the what's the price of each uh, retail dollar, and what's the quantity number? So that's how we can uh, we can see this information. And we also have uh, based on our prediction conference, we we have plus or minus pallets. Like if I'm a consumer and if I conservative, I'll add it, add a pallet or uh, remove a pallet and then uh, do the orders. So and if you want to know uh, information just for one item, then I can click on this and we see that uh, the information on the top is filtered out to that uh, uh, skew. So in this whole process, I'm not going in, uh, going deep into the ordering process for confidentiality purpose, but ultimately we need to turn this uh, into how many orders are needed, needed and, uh, uh, and, and place on the order form. And once they are executed on their system and once they uh, we need to ship it like after they are shipped, we need to track it. So for that, we have created a separate dashboard that is shipment tracker. Uh, so before going to that, uh, so I have an information button here. So when you hover over that, it, uh, it actually shows uh, what's the event's name and uh, demand prediction uh, date range. So for the uh, store we have selected, the demand prediction uh, was uh, from 910 to 917. And, uh, for example, if we pick any other store, uh, any other store here, it, uh, the, date, the dates over here will change. Uh, so that's how we can uh, use this uh, information, additional information over here. And now I'll move to the next dashboard is shipment tracker. So once the orders are placed, we want to track those orders, right? Uh, so here, uh, so here is the dashboard weather weather response shipment tracker. So utilizing all the orders placed up until they were delivered. So this dashboard can be uh, used by merchandising organization units or by store to understand what's on its way. So if I'm a store manager uh, or a region manager who belong to South Florida or Southeast or Southwest, so I can click on uh, that particular region and see that the whole dashboard is filtered out uh, to that region. And we also have a list of stores so they can pick uh, any the store which they belong to. So now I'll uh, I'll select all the regions over here and right uh, here we see PO created by uh, by date. So we have a list of all POs by date. And if I want to understand what's happening or what POs were created on uh, nine uh, so i i click on that there are we see that there are nine pos uh, and they were uh, shipped to these uh, like 477 to dc stores and 458 were shipped to vendor stores so if we want to know detailed information um, or like what are the subclasses uh, and what are the status for each subclass then we can use this sheet where uh, we can either go uh, down the down this sheet and see uh, like by subclass, or we can just uh, enter a subclass and see uh, how uh, how how it's filtered out to that subclass. And on this, uh, we have all different uh, status like new orders, pending pickups, in transit, and so on. And when we hover over each subclass, we can see what's the retail value for that subclass and what's the quantity and uh, count of POs. 
so down uh, when we come to this and if you want to know uh, uh, SKU details by store, uh, we can see uh, this sheet. Uh, and uh, if you pick any store on the map, boom, uh, like here we see that a sheet is popped up and we have detailed information uh, as in by uh, what are the store numbers, PO store, what's the store name, PO stores, uh, PO status, delivery ETA, uh, carrier, shipment, SKU description, and what are the retail value of, uh, of all those uh, SKU descriptions and order quantity. So when we go down here, we see that uh, all other information like in transit, delivery TA, all, all this uh, information, additional information here. And uh, we can either uh, start by retail value or uh, order uh, quantity. Uh, so that's how we can uh, use uh, all this information to track and uh, see uh, what's on its way for uh, any store or any region. So Just to add a little we... bit of color there, um, I, I think the the real value of this for a store manager is before they have to go into three or four different systems to see this type of information. And so now they can go to one place to say, okay, what orders do I have coming? When are they going to be here? When do I need to, you know, have more people here to help stock back up the store? When can I kind of give people an indication that I may have some product back? In, in the in the store, so all of these are are questions that are necessary to answer during an emergency response event. Yeah, uh, yeah. thanks, Charlie. Uh, so, so now uh, I would uh, I want to go in details on what are the features that I have used on this dashboard. Uh, so here uh, we can see when I click on a store or uh, uh, when I click on. Uh, set of stores, we see some animation is going on here. So that's the animation feature. Uh, that's that was uh, the inbuilt uh, feature of Tableau. Uh, so I'll show you how to how to use it or how to do that. So here when we go into format and uh, click animation, we see that there's the on off button uh, on off option here. So by default, it will be off. And when we click on on, we see uh, the duration uh, on how it, how should it flow, like uh, fast, medium, slow, or very slow. I picked uh, slow, which is one second. And we have style like uh, simultaneous or sequential. So if we click on sequential and uh, click any any of the store here and uh, see that the actions are like the, the animations are happening one after the other. So that's sequential. Uh, so by default, uh, I use simultaneous so that everything happens at a time. Uh, and we also have options on which sheet uh, to have this uh, animation uh, apply and which sheet um, and not. So we, we can select this sheet and uh, click on off button. So that way uh, we can um, select on particular sheets. So it's the same option like duration and style. So this is how uh, I used animation. So this feature is uh, this feature is introduced in uh, version 2020, I guess. Yes. Uh, and the other features which I've used is uh, the container uh, uh, hide and show. Like when I click on this, I used containers and action filters to show this uh, this sheet uh, and hide it. And also the other feature I've used is the uh, the sort option. Like uh, the new in 2019 or before, I think they introduced nested uh, nested sorting. So when we go into the sort option, we see uh, we see before it was either by sort by data source order or alphabetic or field or manual. But now they have uh, this nested option, and we can uh, we can when we click this, we can do multiple sortings uh, either by retail value or by order quantity. So that's how I used uh, this feature. And the other one which I want to show is uh, this, the, the, like when, when I click on this button, the navigation button, it goes from one dashboard to the other dashboard. So the purpose of this one is uh, like a lot of our clients, they want to, uh, like traditionally when we publish the dashboard, we see, we see the uh, on server, we see the tabs for different dashboards. And we used to do workarounds on uh, how to move from one dashboard to the other dashboard by adding uh, a sheet and all that. 
this navigation button uh, it made our life so much easier that we don't have to publish uh, by publish uh, like uh, on tabs uh, so it's so much easier there and the other one is uh, animation so before this action this page filter which i used here it was there uh, right from uh, the first version i guess but it was not available on the server or public so now that it's available on uh, server and public why not to use it so so that's how i use all these features but i want to show uh, how it looks without having tabs and navigating from one dashboard to another dashboard and server so this is our north thailand online um, a top tableau online so we can see that there are no tabs so which is so cool. So we can either we can embed this dashboard onto the web. Uh, so and uh, we don't have to see the tabs anymore. So we can go from one dashboard to the other dashboard here. And uh, the other thing which we did was uh, so in our uh, the, like lot lot of our uh, retail stores, the managers and the store managers they are on uh, on ground and they don't uh, they don't sit on. Uh, in front of a uh, desktop or laptop they carry their phones and tablets and now once they want to see the tracking or what's happening and what's the predictions they can easily see uh, use this uh, phone or like we created this tablet and uh, phone option so this is how it looks when they open the dashboard on uh, uh, tablet uh, so and they can they can do all the functions and features what they did uh, sitting on the desktop and this is how, like, so we remove the additional detail information to make the phone phone option so that uh, they can see the high level information, like click on the map and see what are the imp important metrics and what's the high level uh, orders needed or uh, like that. And they can click any date or all other filters are available, same as the desktop. In the same way, we have also made uh, the tablet and phone uh, for uh, device actions for the other dashboard as well. Uh, this is for uh, tablet, the, the shipment tracker dashboard on tablet, and this is on phone. Uh, so here we don't have, we don't need map, but we can just select uh, the, re the store manager or region manager. They can select their region and store and see what are the POs and they can select, click on subclass. If, if it's not clear by uh, all the subclass, they can select a subclass and see what's happening uh what's happening on just by using their phones so with this i conclude uh, my presentation and i'll hand it over to kali yeah um so thank you divya really appreciate it i mean all of the functionality that we showed here is specific to hurricanes um, but emergency response in general is something that requires preparation uh, you know, we say emergency response is one in the off season, and it doesn't just apply to hurricanes. If you're not prepared for major disruptions in your supply chain or major disruptions in demand, then there's no way when it actually happens, you can uh, respond in a way that is, you know, supportive of your needs and supportive of your customers' needs. Um, so we strongly, you know, encourage folks to look at their, their business and say, you know, COVID is a great example of huge disruption in the market as well as supply chain where um, you know, people just aren't buying product. And how do you understand the impact that that's going to have on your business, your staffing levels, your ability to, to get things where they need to be? Um, and I think this kind of just reinforces that it's important to be prepared to have dry runs and to have an effective emergency response group inside your organization that really is dedicated to responding to these things. So thank you all so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I think we're opening up for questions. Yes, that was awesome. Thank you guys so much, Carly and Divya. That was really great. Um, we have a few questions. I'm trying to like click through and find them. So Nelson or Jen, if you see any, please like feel free to jump in. But one of them was about connecting to the TensorFlow Keras to your Tableau. How does how often does it refresh? Like, can you share a little more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we ran this all in BigQuery, and so CloudML um, output the results into um, output the results into BigQuery, um, and that connection in our process was kicked off uh, by a command line. 
So we would run all of our models on command line and that, the very last thing that we would do is issue a tab command to go and refresh the extract that we're using. Um, from a practical perspective, you can do that. You can just directly query Big, BigQuery, which is the Google Cloud Platform data warehouse. Um, or you could use a RESTful hook to go out and actually trigger the refresh on a server. So any one of those would work really well for us. I Ali, there's another question. Uh, what were the models used for deep learning? Um, yeah, so the models in this case were deep neural networks. Um, so we, we passed in thousands of different um, features along with 10, um, 10 years worth of that data, the, the training data. Um, and we found, we tried a bunch of different things. So we tried basic statistical modeling tools like ARIMA um, for time series analysis. And we tried even more complex neural networks like recurrent neural networks that are typically used in time series data. Um, what we ended up figuring out is that our demand deep neural network that was broken into three categories. One is what's called pre-strike. That's before the event happens. Um, that's typically people going out and buying batteries and whatnot. Um, the immediate post event, which is when people need things like tarps, um, dehumidifiers, um, and then the long-term rebuild phase. So we built three different models for those three different time periods in order to accurately predict demand. But each one of those models was a deep neural network based on category of product. One more question, guys. There was a question about can this type of dashboard be used to anticipate for large sales spikes like Black Friday, particularly whenever there's heavy dependent manufacturer supply chain for product types like large appliances or something like that? I would say absolutely. Any type of spike is where these types of algorithms. Um, so in the past, you know, you, you probably will have data from past Black Friday sales that you can look over and see what categories of products sell especially well. Um, the challenge might be that in a natural disaster, people go things uh, in response to the same event. Um, whereas in Black Friday, what people purchase is actually very heavily influenced by what's available. So you would need to be careful with how you construct your model, but it absolutely could apply in this case. Awesome. We have, and I don't know if we can do this pretty quick. I know we're uh, pushed up against time, but um, the purpose of the nested feature in the dashboard, there was a question about if there was go over the purpose of the nested feature. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we can we can either for that uh, nested feature. So we can sort by retail or value or order quantity just to see what are the top. Or like for example, for retail quantity for this one is highest. So if we want to know what are the high quantity or what's the retail value, so that's how that's the use of the nested uh, feature here, nested sorting option here. I think the the thing to drive home here is that we're sorting also by delivery ETA. So we're getting a bunch of different sorts pulled out here that are, are coming into the nested. Um, and in other dashboards, we might have more and more columns. So it's useful to sort by um, order quantity, then retail value, then some other fields as well, which is what that new functionality enables. Excellent. 